scripture lesson this morning comes from the first chapter of John, beginning at the first verse through the 14th verse, and then a selection from Romans 8. first, the word present to God, God present to the word and the word was God, and readiness from God from day one. Everything was created through him, nothing, not one thing came into being without him. And what came into existence was life, and the light was the light to live by, and the light life blazed out in the darkness, and the darkness could not put it out. And then we turn to Romans 8, and I understand Peggy preached on this last week, but you're going to find out that people can read the same verse and have a different take. So it's, it's actually kind of cool. Um, I'm starting at the 15th verse. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave-tending adventure. It's adventurously expected, greeting God with a child like, what's next, Papa? God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is, and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we're going to get exactly what's coming to us, which is an unbelievable inheritance. And we go through exactly what Christ goes through, if we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him as well. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs, our aching groans. He knows us far better than we know ourselves and knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love is worked for God and is worked into something new. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. Let's have a prayer. Almighty and gracious God, as we come here this morning, we feel your presence with us in so many amazing ways. We feel the cool breezes and we know that your spirit is with us. And so we come asking that you walk with us, that you share with us, that you reconcile with us, and you show us the power of who you are. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Maybe the reason everybody likes Romans 8 so much is because the Apostle Paul just seems to have so much to say in this chapter. Paul, who went from being like, you know, the worst person ever, from being a Roman citizen who persecuted Christians to someone who was caught by God, blinded by God, made helpless by God, and who found his way into the kingdom, just has some amazing things to say because he has been forgiven in an amazing grace. He went from being a Roman citizen who's job and whose call was to destroy anybody who professed Jesus Christ to being one of his fervent supporters because as we all know whoever's been forgiven an awful lot has an awful lot to praise for the one who has done the forgiving and so the apostle Paul comes as we hear the words this morning and he's talking about a couple different things number one sometimes we don't know how to pray as we ought but the Spirit intercedes and sighs too deep for words. I don't know about you, but I find myself praying at odd times, you know? When my youth group was in Florida and we took them to Disney World, I found myself praying as they led me on to Test Track. Now, if you know anything about Test Track at Disney World, it's like a roller coaster on steroids. And my whole goal of going to Disney World is going on something that doesn't scare the bejesus out of me, okay? And Test Track does that. So my youth group says to me, it's tough to be a pastor some days, 
Just trust us. Now, when somebody says those kind of words, I'm like, yeah, I'm running the other direction, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so they lead me onto this ride, and I'm like terrified, and they looked at me, and you know, sometimes people listen. You don't think they listen to your sermons, but you find out that they do. What did you say about Jesus helping us through the tough times? I'm like, well, it didn't include test track. And they said, yes, it did. <laughs> so here I am hurtling on this thing. And they looked at me with a triumphant grin at the end. And they said, did you pray a lot on that ride? <laughs> and I said, you're right, I did. Yep, yep. And they said, but you passed the test. Sometimes we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the spirit intercedes and sighs too deep for words. We were in Florida in May, and it worked out that we were there when Eric and Carlin were there, because Jim with his Parkinson's has gotten worse. And he was afraid to be in Florida with just us. And so it just happened that it worked out that we were there with Eric and Carlin, which was wonderful. And he woke up one morning, and he was scheduled for surgery the day after we got home for hernia surgery. Lots of fun in that direction. He wakes up on Monday morning. The surgery is exactly one week away, and he said another famous phrase, don't be mad at me. And I'm like, okay, what's coming next? Do not be mad at me. He says, I can't do it Monday. I just, something's working on me. I cannot do it on Monday. I can't have surgery. And I said, all right, I'm not sure this is negotiable. You have to have surgery on Monday. He says, no, I don't. The doctor said I could go three months out. So I called and we got it postponed for two weeks. And wouldn't you know, God moment here. We were supposed to come home Friday on the auto train. And we had taken the auto train because we took our stuff and we took some of Eric and Carlin's and the kids' stuff. And it just worked out beautifully. And, and um, Jim comes off the porch at the hotel we're staying at. And I had just gotten off the phone with Amtrak. And I said that famous word, derailment. And he said, what do you mean derailment? I said, we're not going home on Amtrak tomorrow. There's been a derailment in Florence. The people heading south and the people heading north are delayed. And we're not going home tomorrow unless we drive. We couldn't leave that exact moment because we were bringing all the souvenirs home for the Light family. In fact, it was so funny when we got to the hotel that night. Eric and Carlin come off the elevator, and Carlin looks me square in the eye and says, I hope you brought a U-Haul. <laughs> All their stuff fit in the back of our trunk. It was great. But it was a God moment for us, because if Jim had not listened to that small voice, he would have been totally stressed out. And with his Parkinson's, that would have made it worse. So as it was, we got home Sunday afternoon. He did not have surgery on Monday. He had it two weeks later. Everything was great. Sometimes we don't know how to pray as we ought. But if we listen to the Holy Spirit, he shows us the way, and he shows us the light, and he shows us the power. And then we move on to the next part of the lesson, where it says that God brings us together in love. How many of you have felt at times that God's love is just overpowering to you, or sometimes you feel that you've, you've lost him? God's love is here for all of us at all times and all places, because why? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish from this earth but have everlasting life. And Paul says that he brings us present before God in love. Not anger, not hurt, not all that terrible stuff, but that he prays for us and he brings us together in love. 
One of the things that we're going to be doing is sharing God's love with our neighborhood and how you do that. My husband's way of sharing love with our neighbor across the street is to take her garbage can in on every Thursday. It's just something he does. And this winter, when the snow was piled high on our roof, she shared her love for our family by getting her stepfather to take the snow off the roof so the furnace would kick back on. And you think those are simple, stupid things. But you share your love for one another in the little things that you do. For example, I'm tall, right? And I run into a lot of short people at the grocery store. And sometimes the thing they need is at the top of the shelf and they can't get it to them. So I get it for them. It's a stupid thing. It's an easy thing. And, you know, I'm getting creaky in the back. So some of these short people get the stuff at the bottom shelf for me. It all works out just great when we do things together for one another in love. When we listen to that small voice that leads us to the Holy Spirit. When God says, put away your fears. You can ride test track. You don't always have to be sitting on it's a small world, which is an easy one. God reminds us that if we look around us, if we feel the benefits and the joys, that his love will continue with us. Amen.